Hi there, I'm Mark. And I'm Chris. In our last video on how to make a high quality PCB on a low cost CNC, we got a few questions from our viewers on how we did the solder mask. So in this video, we're going to share our tips and tricks for how to apply a UV curable solder mask. We're also going to try out a different technique called Dynamask to see how it compares. And this is how the boards are going to turn out. There are two very important reasons why you should apply solder masks to your PCBs. Number one is to avoid oxidation. If you do not protect the copper on your board, it will over time deteriorate. Number two is to make it easier to solder the components and avoid solder bridges. A solder bridge is when solder ends up connecting two or more of your components' legs. First, we need to print out a template for the solder pads. This is usually a part of the gerber file. Print it on a transparent printer film and cut out two pieces. These are going to be placed on top of each other so that very little UV light will make it through. We use super glue to hold the two pieces together. Then prepare the copper cladboard by rubbing it lightly with a fine scotch bright pad. Wipe off all the dust and grease with acetone and paper. Let's start with the UV curable paints. Place a piece of paper under the PCB to avoid getting paint on your workbench. The tricky part with the UV paint is to get the right amount of paint on the board. If you get it too thick, the paint will squeeze out too far and it makes a mess on the edges of the board. Get it too thin and it will look bad and not give the proper protection of the PCB. We like to place the transparent film directly on the paints and just press it down with a glass plate. We have found that using a glass plate and not something flexible like plastic makes it much easier to get an even layer that looks good. You know you got a good amount of paint when you can clearly see the tracks on the board. If you get it wrong, you can just wash it off and start over. Adjust the solder mask if needed. Then we cure it on the UV light for about 20 seconds. The curing time depends on the strength of the UV light you use. You want the transparent film to easily lift off the paint, but the paint on the pads should still be liquid. Start by drying off as much paint as possible. Then use some cleaning alcohol to gently remove the paint on the solder pads. Remember the paint is not fully cured all the way through. So by using too much alcohol, you can wash away too much paint. You only want to remove the paint on the pads and not the paint in between the pads. Then cure the board some more until the paint is fully cured. Before we review the results, let's apply the Dynamask so that we can compare. Some people find applying Dynamask easier than working with UV paint and it's much more like following a recipe and requires less technique. Start by simply cut out a piece of Dynamask with a pair of scissors. The paint is covered with a matte layer of plastic on the bottom side and a clear layer on the top side. To remove the bottom layer, we simply place a piece of tape on the top side and the bottom side and pull it fast apart a couple of times. Do not remove the entire bottom plastic, but do remove the tape on the top. Then gently lay the bottom side down on the PCB and simply use your finger to remove any air bubbles. Be careful to not press too hard. The paint is somewhat sticky.
To get the paint to stick fully to the PCB, run it through a laminator. Many online videos tell you to run it through multiple times. But this often wrinkles the top plastic with our laminator. And we get a perfect adhesion by simply running it through once. It is recommended to dunk it in cold water to cool it down fast. This will help the adhesion even more. Place the solder mask template over the PCB and cure it under UV light for about 30 seconds. Now place the PCB in total darkness for one hour. When the hour is up, peel off the top protective layer. Dynamask often comes with a solution to remove the uncured paint on the pads, but we simply use the same alcohol as we use on the UV paint and scrub the pads with a brush. And now it needs to cure some more. The instruction says one hour. Then it's time for the tinning on both boards. By tinning the PCB, you are coating the copper metal with a thin layer of tin. This will both protect it from oxidation and makes it easier to solder on. Just drop your PCBs in liquid tin. The longer you let it sit, the more tin will stick to the copper areas on your PCB. Follow the manufacturer's recommendations. As you can see from this video, the Dynamask is very straightforward. There are more steps and more waiting, but it's easier. When we compare the UV paint and Dynamask, the results are very similar. Both do an excellent job protecting the PCB and creates a good solar mask. So we can recommend both. Although we use the UV paint more often as it's faster. This PCB was created on the 38 in CNC. To see how, check out this video. Hope you give this video a like if you found it helpful. And you're always welcome to subscribe.